Hi, my name is Dr. Zilma Mata. I'm an Associate Dean for the College of Health Professions, and I'm also the Chair for the Department of Health and Human Performance. Welcome. Hi, I'm Dr. Lydia Aguilera. I'm a Clinical Associate Professor in the College of Health Professions. I'm a PharmD by profession, and I serve as Executive Director of Special Projects to the Dean in the College of Health Professions. Hello, I am Dr. Lin Wang, Associate Dean for Student Success at the College of Health Professions. Welcome to our presentation. So what is our presentation all about? Well, let me start by reading the title, and it says, you are free to choose, but you are not free from the consequence of, of your choice. So what is this about? Well, this presentation is about the importance of background checks, and particularly for young people to make them aware of how their background check will be done and what a background check really consists of. So part of, the, part, of, part of a background check is it's a screening process. It's a screening process for admission into programs. It's a screening process for placement into clinical sites. It's a screening process for hiring. And it's also a screening process for keeping a job. So what is a CBC? What does the acronym CBC stand for? It stands for Criminal Background Check. So what is a criminal background check? What kind of information is found in a criminal background check that uh, is revealed to um, the university, the clinical sites, and the employers? We're gonna take a closer look at it. So what shows up on your criminal background check? It depends on the type of inquiry that's being requested uh, by a state agency, a school, the, an employer. But almost all of the checks include felony and misdemeanor convictions, um, misdemeanor convictions, and pending criminal cases, arrests. That's a question I get often from students when they have a minor in possession arrest and it hasn't gone to court yet or um, DWI, um, it happens. Uh, and these requests, they, they may also check information related to driving records. Um, believe it or not, too many speeding tickets can negatively impact your background check. Past employment, education, and professional licenses, all that information can show up on the CBCs. Uh, I do want to tell you that when you're counseling students or mentoring students and trying to get them to make good choices, and um, because I often uh, get questions from students that come in with, you know, a minor in possession, and they have to apply for a pharmacy tech trainee license or an intern license, and they don't know what to do because it's this is going to come up on their background check. Um, there are some options, there's always options, um, and I'm just providing this information to you because you're mentoring students. Um, sometimes an agency will take an explanation of what happened and a statement of remorse. You'd be very lucky to get through with that. But other times for something more serious like a DWI, um, uh, students will need to get a lawyer. Um, and have the conviction uh, expunged from their record. And there is a lot of things that, I'm not an attorney, but a lot of things that go into play here. It takes a lot of time because it has to go through several stages in the court system, it takes money, sometimes a lot of money. Uh, I know actually a, a practicing professional that spent more than $30,000 for an expungement on a DWI. And uh, I think he got off easy. But um, just so you know, there are options, but they still, uh, there's still very heavy consequences. Um, if you're a professional and your license uh, has been uh, revoked or probated because of a conviction, uh, you can't work. Uh, you, you cannot work. And if you're a student, you can't get in. The door is shut. Uh, additional screenings that we're going to discuss are drug and substance abuse and uh, immunizations. And 
not just schools, not just our programs, clinics, uh, hospitals, uh, but um, clinical rotation sites and internship sites. They also do uh, random drug screenings and they also require immunizations. I wanted to add uh, Dr. Aguilera on that um, in, in um, clinical sites then in hospitals particularly, they do random checks. They can uh, at their discretion conduct any type of drug uh, testing uh, when our students are placed there. And I, I think you uh, as educators in the public schools, uh, a criminal background check is conducted even for students wanting to go into school grounds just for observations. So we all know the importance of a criminal background check and the information it reveals. This is true. And uh, regarding the drug and substance abuse testing, um, uh, drug misuse and abuse in the workplace costs businesses billions of dollars annually, uh, not just in lost productivity, but also spending on uh, health care, uh, insurance, um, and, um, and the repair of the damage that's caused by someone that is mentally impaired, uh, physically impaired due to uh, drug and substance abuse. It's a huge liability for a company to have an employee that is uh, impaired uh, by um, illicit drug use. Um, and why? Because, you know, the mistakes that can be made. Um, I mean, do you want your surgeon going into surgery uh, with a drug impairment or ha having just uh, abused a, a medication or you wanna pick up your prescription from a pharmacist or even a pharmacy technician that's uh, not 100% that, you know, is maybe their dulled senses or slow reflexes. Uh, you know, think about that. You, you want, uh, I would tell my students, you want to be there 100%. And that's what you, that's what you expect from your healthcare professionals. So that's your, if you aspire to be one, then you also have to make the right choices, and do the right thing so that you can be there 100% with zero impairment and take care of your patients. That is so true. And all these are actually being monitored. Um, as you can see on the slide, uh, this is actually an older information back in 2014, uh, the, the report of uh, employees uh, that's been tested um, positive for illicit uh, drug use. So for our students um, now, uh, living in this time and era, the availability of different drugs are actually even more. So we're pretty sure that the numbers of positive tests are probably uh, higher, especially with the uh, opium crisis uh, in the country right now. So for our students, for our kids, it's actually a much more complicated environment. Um, the distractions are actually getting bigger and they have to be able to make smart choices uh, so please help us to educate them, uh, being aware that there are consequences that will actually stay with them throughout their professional career. For immunizations, uh, like Dr. Aguilera and Dr. Mata shared, uh, it's actually a protection for both the healthcare worker, also for the patient. Um, Throughout the, the process, their academic journey that they will uh, embark. Uh, meningitis is probably the first one that the college, the, the university will actually uh, screen them for. But when they actually become senior students thinking about or, or applying for internship sites, they will be screened for everything. So it's actually a requirement for them to keep an updated immunization record. I would like to add another uh, issue or concern or a reminder to you, the counselors, and then to the students. It's very important now and nowadays to actually keep the social media profile 
as part of the professional profile. When we talk about professional profiles, for us, it's probably our letter of in intent to apply for a position, our transcripts maybe, our CV. But for the kids growing up in this time and era, employers are actually screening for their social media postings. It's, it's, it's a devil-edged sword. Uh, social media has been used for, you know, can be used for marketing purposes and industries, you know, different uh, businesses are actually doing that. But they're also using that platform uh, to, to screen for information on students, for, for ap ap applicants uh, across the board. And you can actually see on the slide too, and the, the uh, proportion or percentage of employers using this particular tool is increasing skyrocket high, with a skyrocket high speed. Um, so please remind them to be very careful. Monitor the social media profile that one creates. I know it's a little um, challenging because social media is, is part of a social life. It, it should have not been connected, but the, the situation right now is that it is actually connected to our professional profile and that's being monitored. Would you like to have anything to add, Dr. Mata and Dr. Aguilera? I would. Uh, I just want to just to get some points across that you can actually use these. These are true with your students. Um, I do. I know someone whose contract was not renewed because the um, employer went on uh, to look at their Facebook profile, and they had uh, two drinks, one in each hand, and shown partying uh, with younger students and their contract wasn't renewed. And uh, this really, this just happened a couple of weeks ago. I was uh, called from uh, an employer uh, that asked me, um, I see that you are friends with so-and-so on Facebook. Uh, what can you tell me about them? Uh, so we're thinking of hiring them. And that was the first time that I thought somebody is actually looking to see who are their friends. So, you know, it's what your parents told you is true, you know, to choose your friends wisely, uh, even on Facebook. Uh, it, it's so important. And I want to make one more point about um, uh, digital media presence, email names. Uh, I've, I've had many inquiries for programs or mentorship from students with crazy emails, you know, like, and like hotlegs at you know gmail.com and i'm not going to respond to an email like that so uh, have them choose professional um email addresses you know use their name and uh, a number or last name or initials or something but um there, you probably know that there are some crazy emails out there and those should not be used especially to address a professional program because it reflects on the student. That's another poor choice. I'd like to add to, um, to that, Dr. Aguilera, that as a department chair, uh, we've had a, had a situation where we didn't hire somebody because when we looked at their social media, it was not the image uh, that we really wanted for our department. So it is very important. Thank you. So we hope you found this presentation very informative and we would like to hear from you. What are your thoughts? Um, again, going back to the title of this presentation, then there are choices to be made, but the consequence is really great. And the importance in, in educating young people throughout their whole process of middle school, high school, knowing that they're are consequences to their choices and they can be lifelong and so we hope you enjoyed this presentation and we're looking forward to hear hearing from you dr. Guilera dr. Wong would you like to add any anything any closure any comments no I'd just be interested in hearing any comments or any anecdotes that they have because uh, 
because these counselors are on the front lines with high school students. So any information that you have that may help us, we'd appreciate it. Yep, I am there with Dr. Aguilera and Dr. Mata. We're here to answer all of any of your questions. So reach out to us, um, feel free to send us an email or, or give us a call and we're, we're here. We wish you all much health, wellness, and be safe. Thank you very much.